furosemide, trade name Lasix. This is a medication you are most likely already common with because so many patients take Lasix because a lot of the conditions that we see people in the hospital for are things like CHF exacerbations or just general CSF, CHF management or hypertension. So there's a lot of reasons we would be giving Lasix. What the indications are for our edema, hypertension, CHF, and what it does, it, it actually prevents resorption of sodium and chloride in the kidneys and it increases the excretion of water, sodium, chloride, magnesium, and potassium. This therapeutic class is diuretic. Its pharmacologic class is loop diuretic. Some things to keep in mind with this is that it can cause hypotension, dry mouth, excessive urination, dehydration, electrolyte abnormalities, and metabolic alkalosis. So because we're giving this medication and what it does, it's going to, it's going to cause water along with a lot of electrolytes to leave the system, okay, through urination. And because of this, we can cause a lot of these electrolyte abnormalities. So with furosemide, we're going to lose our electrolytes, we're going to lose our sodium, our chloride, our magnesium, our potassium, and we could lead the patient into a lot of electrolyte abnormalities. For example, hypokalemia. So for this reason, we do have our potassium sparing diuretics, but furosemide is not going to spare uh, any of these electrolytes. We're going to lose all of them. So we do want to monitor closely our patient's CMP, our comprehensive metabolic profile, and we want to look at these electrolytes and what are the balance with these electrolytes. We do want to use caution in any patients that are taking other antihypertensive, they're taking ACE inhibitors or ARBs, we want to be careful to really monitor their blood pressure if we're also giving Lasix. So for example, if you take your patient's blood pressure and let's say it's 140 over 80 and you do give your ACE inhibitor and then maybe an hour later, you know, the doctor or the physician orders Lasix or you have Lasix ordered, it would be really important to kind of monitor what your patient's blood pressure is prior to giving uh, the Lasix because the Lasix can really decrease blood pressure greatly and we want to make sure, okay, what happened from our, our antihypertensive and then what's happening now that we're giving the Lasix and making sure we don't bottom out their blood pressure. That's really the, one of the biggest things I want you guys to keep in mind here is monitoring blood pressure very closely uh, with giving any sort of Lasix especially if we're giving it with other antihypertensives. And then I really want you to think electrolytes when you think about Lasix. One of the biggest questions you're going to see on NCLEX and nursing exams is going to be regarding uh, Lasix and potassium that is going to cause hypokalemia. We're going to want to watch our patient's EKG and monitor that EKG. We're also going to want to monitor their their blood pressure and their urine output. One of the questions we have on one of our practice exams refers to a patient with CHF who has a very low urine output. Okay, so what's happening here is a lot of people are reading the question and they're seeing a, a patient with low urine output. And one of the options is to give the patient fluids. Now, we would never want to do this with a patient with CHF. The problem with CHF isn't low volume, okay? Actually, giving the patient fluids would put the patient in volume overload and actually be very detrimental to a CHF patient. Remember, they're retaining this volume with CHF. So the appropriate option for a patient with CHF who has low urine output is to give Lasix. That would be a situation where Lasix would be given to try to help them get rid of this fluid. Now, in a regular patient with low urine output, we might look at possibly giving the patient a quick bolus to try to see uh, if they're able to get rid of that fluid. But in a patient with CHF, a appro more appropriate option would be to give Lasix or to give a diuretic to try to help the patient rid their body of this, of this excess fluid that they're not able to get rid of. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. That's NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at nrsng.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.